morning. We are so grateful this morning. Anybody grateful that he woke us up this morning and started us on our way? We thank you, God. We want to start right now with a moment of prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your strength and everlasting joy. We repent right now of everything that we've said and done that was not pleasing to you. And we ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. We ask that you have your way in this service on today. Move like you want to move. Heal and deliver those that are in their homes, Father. We thank you for your delivering power. And we thank you for keeping us right now in the midst of this storm. We thank you for your precious love in Jesus' name amen hallelujah 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 anybody came to worship the lord this morning hallelujah anybody came to bless the name of the lord wherever you are hallelujah in your living room wherever you are come on stand up and bless the name of the lord hallelujah
God. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you are so good. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. It's not enough words to express how good you are, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name, oh God. Yes, yes, yes. We give you glory. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Lord, you are good. Yes. You've been better 
that you made. Yes, so many times that yes, you heal Lord. me. Yes. You've been very good to me. Yes. You've been yes. so good. Yes, You've been yes, so good. Yes, You've been yes, so your problem and say you another NFC virtual worship experience. We want to thank each and every one of you for joining us once again for another experience here with New Mount Calvary. Now, at this time, you already know what I need you to do. What is it I need you to do? I need you to click share. Click share because we all know that sharing is caring, right? So at this time, please click share because as we share, others will get to join in on this worship experience. And while you're sharing, why don't you go ahead and click a few of those hearts? to let us know that you've been enjoying the worship experience so far. So click a few hearts, let us see you. We wanna see how much you've been enjoying us. So also, NMC would like to stay connected with you. So at the end of this service, I need you to please email us at info at caveryland.org. As you send us your email, it allows us to connect with you through our email and we can keep you updated with what's going on at NMC because we're gonna be having a lot of stuff that we want you to be a part of. So go ahead and email us after this is over. Again, that's at info at caveryland.org. Now, we want to say happy birthday to everybody that's celebrating a birthday in the month of January. We hope and pray that you enjoy your day to the fullest. Now, in the New Mount Cavalry way, let me just say, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, everybody. Ladies, thank you all so much for joining us last Monday as we read the first chapter of When Women Pray by Bishop T.D. Jakes. We discussed Hannah, and we learned about how God blessed Hannah with Samuel, the child that she always wanted. So we hope and pray that you will join us tomorrow night at 7 p.m. 
as we will discuss chapter two and we'll be talking about Mary. So you join us and bring a few friends along with you. Now again, that's tomorrow night at 7 p.m. We want you to join us as we discuss chapter two of When Women Pray by Bishop T.D. Jakes. Now, last thing, have you subscribed to the YouTube channel? If you haven't, at the end of this service, I need you to head on over to YouTube. I need you to search for the New Mount Calvary logo, click subscribe, and guess what? You'll be a part of the New Mount Calvary YouTube channel. So make sure you head on over after the service is over. And I said last thing, right? Well, sorry, I gotta say this. We wanna thank you all for supporting the ministry at New Mount Calvary. It's because of you that we're able to do some much needed re renovations during this time. So again, we wanna say thank you for your continual support. We pray that God blesses you over and over again for being a blessing to New Mount Calvary. So once again, thank you all for joining us this morning and I pray that you enjoy the service. Have a good day. Hey, good morning, New Mount Calvary virtual followers and friends. Today is the day that the Lord has made and we're gonna to continue to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for our um, special guests this morning, um, assisting us with praise and worship. Listen, I need for you to do me a favor. I need for you to get into a mode of excitement because there's something I wanna share with you. We've been talking about the renovation and all of those great things, um, but I need some more people to commit. I need you to commit, I need you to commit. We asked for 50 people to commit to $221 and we asked for 50 people to connect, commit to uh, $20 and 21 cents. And I was the one who said, hey, if, if I'm asking for the people to do this, you gotta make sure that you're in too. And so I did, I did, I sold on last Sunday and I'm going to sow again because I believe if we're gonna get there, it's gonna take some faith moves. Somebody type down in the comment field, faith moves. Because I believe if we're going to do anything in this year, if we're going to have a balanced life, one of the things that we're going to have to do is we have to increase our faith and make some faith moves. So I need some more committed people that say, hey, we're going to commit to the $221. We're going to commit to $20.21. All I ask you to do is make sure that when you give, that when you send it in, that you put on there uh, renovation so we'll make sure that it's going to that particular um, uh, part of our budget, okay? Listen, I want to just jump into the word of the Lord today. We're still dealing with um, having this balanced life. Um, do you have balance? We want to talk about some things today and see how we can get you still stirred up, still moving um, for your 2021. I want you to go to Jeremiah 12 with me. Jeremiah, the 12th chapter. Jeremiah 12. Listen again, thank you for each and every one of you while you're going to Jeremiah 12. Thank you for each and every person that voted. Um, your vote count. Your vote truly counts. Jeremiah 12, Jeremiah 12. I'm going to read one verse for you, and we're going to try to pull some nuggets out of there um, this morning, and hopefully it'll bless you. Jeremiah 12, and looking at the fifth verse of Jeremiah 12. 12th chapter, the fifth verse. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Jeremiah 12 and 5, as Jeremiah has had a conversation with the Lord, the Lord responds to Jeremiah's request. And this is what the Lord had to say to Jeremiah. If you have raced with runners and they have worn you out, how then can you compete with horses? If you stumble in a peaceful land, what will you do in the thickets of the Jordan? He says, if you have raced with runners and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you through the word of the Lord today on this thought. Because I truly believe that if you're going to make it in 2021, you're going to have to really challenge yourself. You're going to push yourself a little bit further uh, than you did in 2020. So I want to talk about today, are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to put in the work? God bless you. Brothers and sisters, as a athlete, as a track runner, track and field, a runner, a runner takes so much time preparing for a race, 
take the 400 meters, for example, and that runner prepares all year long just for a race that lasts just a minute. He's preparing, she's preparing, she's conditioning, they're working out, watching what they eat, competing over and over again with themselves in the gyms, working out, making sure they're putting the right things in their body. But what they do, they continuously work hard and put forth the effort for just one race. I believe if we're gonna do anything in 2021, you have to ask yourself, am I conditioning myself or am I preparing myself for God to open up doors and for me to walk in? Because I believe God can open up doors all day long, but are you ready? Are you even prepared to walk in the door? God can prepare tables for you, but are you ready to sit at tables with individuals that's ready to make you a deal? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you preparing yourself for the blessings that God have coming your way? Are you conditioning yourself for the very blessings that you've been praying for? Because I believe that sometimes we want a lot of things and we require and request a lot of things from God, but are you ready? Are you willing to put in the work, New Mount Carver? Are you willing to put in some extra hours that help ministry get to where it needs to be? Are you willing to put in a few more hours in your career to get to that next level? Are you willing to put in the work? Because I believe is there anything that has stopped the body of Christ, that has stopped individuals from being successful is a four-letter word called lazy. Oh, brothers and sisters, the spirit of lazy has hit a lot of homes, even during the pandemic. I know there's a virus going on, but there's also a spirit of lazy that has been going through homes, that has been tearing up marriages, that have been tearing up your career, that has been stopping you from going to the next level because you allowed that spirit of lazy to overtake you. But man, I want to encourage you this morning because I believe that God is about to do some great things in your life simply because you're not going to lay around at this season. You're ready to get up. You're ready to condition yourself. You're ready to do this thing daily. You're going to start being in a devotional praise and worship, praying in the morning, making sure that you're conditioning your mind, your body, and your soul because you know that if you're going to move forward in this year, lazy can't be a part of your life. I need somebody to talk Type that down in the comment field. I refuse to be lazy. Oh, brothers and sisters, when we look at the text, Jeremiah is feeling some kind of way. Can I just preach this thing how I feel this morning? Anybody ever just find yourself feeling some kind of way and you say, wait a minute, God, something ain't right. Have you ever found yourself dealing with life and you say something ain't right because, wait a minute, God, I've been serving you, I've been worshiping you, and I feel some kind of way about how things are turning out. So Jeremiah, he has a conversation with God because he's feeling some kind of way. And Jeremiah goes to the Lord and he has a conversation with him. Jeremiah 12 and 1, he says, you will be righteous, Lord, even if I bring a case against you. Look at him. He's telling, he says, you're righteous, Lord, but I, I got a problem with you. I ain't that bold of Jeremiah to go to the Lord and say, I, I got a problem with you. But I, I want to I at least admire Jeremiah this morning because at least if he had a problem with the Lord, he knew who to go to. And I believe sometimes the reason why we can't get to where we need to be because we don't know how to go to God with issues that we have. Instead, we will either just back away from the church, we'll stop praying, we'll stop giving, we'll stop loving. But the best thing you can do when you have something going on in your life, you're feeling some kind of way, as people say, you in your feelings. That's what Jeremiah was. Jeremiah was in his feelings because the worst thing you can do sometimes is be in your feelings because feelings are emotional feelings can lead us sometimes to doing things that God would not be pleased with how do you know this queen because the Bible tells us that the heart of man is wicked and if you go on your feelings sometimes man have anybody just been in your feelings y'all want to talk real with me this morning you've been in your feelings you knew you shouldn't have sent that text message but you was in your feelings you knew you shouldn't have posted that message on Facebook or you shouldn't have did it on Instagram but you did it because you were in your feelings. Uh, I want y'all to just be honest with me, ladies. You know some of the stuff you said to that fella. You shouldn't have said it, but you was in your feelings. Fellas, you said some stuff to some ladies. You shouldn't have said it, 
but you was in your feelings. Jeremiah made some decisions because he was in his feelings. Be very careful in 2021 of being in your feelings so much. He goes to the Lord and he says, you are righteous, Lord, but I got a case against you. I wish to contend with you. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? In other words, when Jeremiah is saying, why is it that wicked folk are being blessed? Why is it that folk that don't even love you, I see them being blessed? And I just want y'all to be honest with Pastor this morning. Have you ever found yourself in a place where you like, man, I'm going to church. I'm, I know I'm saved. I'm giving. I'm tithing. I'm loving folk. But Sheila don't do jack. How in the world does Sheila get a raise on a job? She cuss all the time. Sheila got three different boyfriends. How in the world is Sheila being blessed? Because too often we compare ourselves with the blessings of others as if God can run out of blessings with Sheila. Can I just stop and pin something right here and tell you what God has for you? God will still bless you. God does not have to take blessings from somebody else in order to bless you. I believe that God is big enough to have blessings for you. But too often we're looking at individuals. Now watch this. Uh, I use Sheila as that name. Don't y'all go looking for Sheila out there. I'm just using her as a person of reference in my message. Because I believe too often what we do in our lives, we want to criticize and we want to critique Sheila's life uh, as if our life is just that good. But can I help you out this morning? Yeah, God saved you from something. God delivered you from something maybe she Sheila isn't where you are yet, but God can have grace and mercy on whoever he desires to have a grace and mercy upon. Because I believe in this season of your life, don't look at the blessings of others to be jealous, but I want you to look at the blessings of others to be excited. I want you to look how God is blessing other people and say, man, if God can bless the wicked, I know he can bless the ones that serve in him. If God can bless those who don't even come called on his name, I know he can bless me that calls on his name every morning. If God can bless individuals that don't even go to the church, I know he gonna bless me that live the church. I wish you would just type down in the comment field, I'm glad to be in Jesus this morning because one thing I've understood with reading the text, Jeremiah says, why does the way of the wicked prosper? My brothers and sisters, I believe that too often we believe because of things that's going on in this world, we say, you know what, God had to do this because of the evil that's going on in this world. Yeah, there's some evil going on in this world, but here's the thing. When God is speaking, God is speaking to those who is connected to him. Watch this. Because what we do, we look at people outside of the church and we critique their behavior. Somebody that's not in God is supposed to act a certain way. Somebody who does not live by biblical principles should probably live a certain way. But what God is saying in this season, he's saying, I'm looking at the ones who call my name. He said, you're the one that say you love me. You're the one that go to church. You're the one that say you live for me. He says, I'm doing these things because, watch this, not because of the wicked people that's outside of me, but because of those who believe in me that are living wicked lives. Okay, so I know you probably didn't like that this morning because the reality of your life is if you're going to get better and if you're going to do better, there's some things and some decisions you got to make with your life as a believer and watch this now pastor q you talking as if you perfect pastor q is not perfect but one thing i do not do i don't allow myself uh, to become comfortable in what i know god is not pleased with okay so what i'm trying to get you to a place is if you're going to move forward in 2021 if you're going to work hard if you're going to get what god has for you don't become comfortable in living a life that you know god is not pleased with oh man all right, I, I, this, I'm just throwing this in here. I'm just preaching how I feel because I understand that if you try to live comfortably in sin, watch this. If you really love God, it's hard to live comfortable in sin. It's hard to do things outside of the will of the Lord. But he says, watch this. Look at the wicked. He said, why do all the treacherous live at ease? Why, why do all these folk that act the fool seem to be having a great life? Man, I know y'all got some friends. Y'all just talk to Pastor Q. Y'all know y'all got some friends. That joker act a slap fool, but then he going to pull up with, so, with a Mercedes with some 22s on. You sitting here looking like, wait a minute. I, here I am. I, I, I'm, I'm trying my best to get this plucker to crank up, and this joker going to pull up with a new Mercedes, and he always 
always acting like a fool. Here it is, Jeremiah saying, why are you blessing these crazy folk? He says, you're giving them things. Come on, man, y'all know if you just be honest, sometimes you look at other folk's life and say what? Why not me? How many of you have looked at the life of somebody else and said, that, that's what I want too? But can I just stop and help somebody this morning? Because I believe if you're going to put in the work, there's something you need to know. Because too many people want somebody's glory, but you don't want their story. Uh-oh, Pastor Q, can you just preach a little bit? I believe I will. Because the reality of it is, you don't know what a person had to go through to get the things they got. And watch this. You don't know the lies some folk tell to keep what they got. Okay, y'all don't want to be real with Pastor asking you this morning, how many of y'all have had to make arrangements on the arrangements just so you can go and ball out one Friday? Okay, y'all don't want to be real with me. How many of y'all have went on a date and your bills were already behind? How many of you got cars right now? And yeah, you driving good, but you know you're about two days away from the repo man pulling up. I just need to talk to some real people that'll be honest with me and say, you know what? I know I look and look at people's lives and may want the things that they have, but you don't know the story that they had to go to to get this glory. You don't understand sometimes the work people had to put in in order to get to the level they need to be in Christ. You don't understand the work people have to put in to get to the level they want to be in and they're successful in their careers. You don't know the level of work that people have to put in to have the marriage that they have. Okay, I know you're looking at social media. Somebody sent home saying, you know what? Hey man, what do the lonely do? At Christmas, I know you don't sung that song 12 times, and you get ready, you thinking already, uh oh, Valentine's Day coming around, I ain't got no boo, but can I just share this with you? Everybody who booed up ain't in love. Okay, y'all don't want to talk to your boy this morning. I think I'm talking pretty good. You got to get to a point where you say, Lord, what you have for me, that's what I'm going to contend with. God, what you're going to give me in this season, I'm competing with nobody else but me. Somebody type down in the comments. Feel I don't have time to compete with nobody else. I'm competing with the better version of me every day. When I wake up tomorrow morning, I want to be a better version of Quinn. When I wake up next week, I want to be a better version of Quinn. I want Quinn finances to get better. I wish you could just type down in that comment field. I'm working on me. Oh, brothers and sisters, he comes to him and says, Watch this. He says, Because what you're doing is not right. But what I want you to do, God, just to make this thing fair, can you, can you slaughter them all? Can you kill all them wicked folk? Man, it, it's bad, man. When, when, you, when you get to a place that your heart's so heavy and you in your feelings, you, you, you talking to the Lord. And some of y'all, y'all probably going to be real with pastor this morning. But some of y'all don't thought to yourself, I, I just wish you'd just die. I, I, I just, I, Lord, Lord, I, ain't, I don't want them to burn up in no fire, but just let them not wake up in his sleep. Some of y'all don't have some evil thoughts because you was in your feelings. You know, you don't have evil thoughts about some lady, evil thoughts about some man. Why? Because you were in it, your feelings. Here it is. He says, I need for you to drag the wicked away like sheep to the slaughter and set them apart for the day of killing. Jeremiah wanted them dead. Oh, brothers and sisters, how bad is it that when you get in your feelings, you can go that far that you'll rather see somebody dead? Can I just talk to you this morning? When situations get you so bad in your feelings that you'll want to see somebody hurt, you need to be praying to the Lord. You need to say, Lord, I need you to remove this out of my life because I do not believe that if God has something for you, that he has to hurt somebody just for you to be blessed. If God has something for you, guess what? You don't have to pray that somebody else be killed, somebody else go through some poverty, somebody else lose their home, somebody else lose their marriage, somebody else lose their job just for you to get some joy. I need you to understand that God has a Enough, not just for anybody around you, but God has enough for you too. He says, how long will the land mourn and the grass of every field wither? He said, look at this, man, we're losing stuff. The world is getting bad. The economy is looking bad. 
stimulus check was in pending. Hey, man, y'all don't want to talk to me today. Somebody was watching their account saying, man, how long will my stimulus check be pending? Hey, man, because there's some stuff going on. I need my stimulus check. This economy is bad. I, I need extra money. He's saying, how long will the land go through these problems? But we're watching wicked folk. We're watching politicians get rich. We're watching the wealthier get wealthier. Jeremiah is saying, but what about us? We're struggling, and all along, God, you seem to be blessing the two percent and you forgot about us at the bottom can I talk to some people this morning I ain't even mean to go this way but I want you to understand something uh, that you got to put in the work because I know there's some wicked people in politics there's some wicked people in government and I don't know if that's Democrat or Republican but I don't have time to figure it out but one thing I do know if Quinn Baker put in the work if I put in the sweat if God be for me can't nobody be against me and I believe this morning if you take your mind off of, of what you need for everybody to do for you and get up off that bed of laziness and, and do for yourself what you can do I believe God is going to bless you I believe that God is going to take you to the next level if you just make some steps yourself I think too many times we're looking for handouts but the reality of it is I don't need no handout just move out my way so I can put my hand in I believe that somebody can type that in the comment field why would you want to put your hand in because I understand uh, if I put my hand in uh, the elder saint said hold my hand Lord uh, while I run this race because I don't want to run this race in vain I'm getting a little happy this morning because I believe if you're going to make some things happen in 2021 uh, you just need for God to hold your hand oh brothers and sisters he said because of the evil of his residents animal and birds have been swept away for the people have said he cannot watch this he cannot see what our end will be. Oh, brothers, they're looking around and trying to figure out why is everybody being blessed. This is, this is Jeremiah's prayer. Look at what you're doing, God. What about me? But I want to just share with you out of this fifth verse because I believe God's response to Jeremiah is God's response to you this morning. Are you willing to put in the work? Man, you know, so many people have already said 2021 is going to be my year. 2021 is going to be the same as 2020 if you don't put in no work. 2021 is going to be the same as 2020 if you don't make some choices. 2021 ain't going to be no different than last year if you don't change some things about you. He says, watch this. Here's the response. Here's the response that the Lord has. He says, if you have race with runners and they have worn you out, how then can you compete with horses? God is saying, listen, if in, in this season of your life, if all of the small troubles and small things you're going through is giving you headaches, how in the world are you asking me for more? God is saying, watch this, if, if you are not financially disciplined enough to handle a $600 stimulus check, why are you asking me for more? Some, some, some of you already done balled out. You, you already done balled out, and you, and you know you know for a fact you ain't got but $2 in your savings account. What, is that financial discipline? No. So God is saying, watch this, in this season of your life, there are some things I would do financially for you, but you got to be financially disciplined yourself. We got to be better stewards of our money. I believe, watch this, he's saying, watch this, if you race with runners, amen, the King James Version says, amen, footmen, amen, because when they were soldiers, when they, when they were going to war, when they were going to battle, amen, the men on the horses, the chariots, they wouldn't go in first. They would send in, amen, Man, the foot soldiers, the foot run, this, this would be the first line, amen, that would go in. And they would just send them in to fight. And you'll see them in there just fighting one for another. And on the top of the hill, here it is, the men, amen, on, on the horses are watching those out there fighting because they say, watch this, we're going to allow them to find themselves just wearing each other out. They're trying to see the strength of the army. Okay, can I talk to you? The little things that you've been going through, God has sent it so you can see how strong you are. Amen. God has allowed you to go through some of these small things just to see how strong you are. Can you handle a little financial problem? Can you handle a little problem?
problem in your marriage. Can you watch this? Let me just stop. I know. Hey, man, listen. Now, if you can't handle dating, what you going to go marry the person for? I, it ain't, ain't going to change when you get married. If y'all are having some issues right now with dating, if you can't handle the dating season, you definitely ain't going to be able to handle the marriage season. And I just want to stop and tell somebody, hey, man, as you go forth in your life, ask yourself, what is it? that God has allowed me to go through in this small season, amen, before I can go to the next level. He says, if the runners have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? Listen, are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to put in the sweat? You're going to go through some things. You're going to go through some seasons. But guess what? I believe God is not going to allow you to come into anything, come into contact with anything in this season of your life that God cannot bring you through. Listen, I believe even in ministry, I've told myself, and God shared with me, he said, Queen, why would you be up all night? Why would you stay up all night worrying about the finances? Because if that's how you're going to act, over a couple of thousand dollars how can I bless you with millions I said God you're right I got to get to a place where I totally trust in God that's all I'm trying to tell somebody when it comes a man to putting in the work you got to trust that everything that you do God is going to bless it everything that you touch God is going to bless it everything that you've been praying for God is going to bless it because you trust in the Lord just that much why because here it is Job said it like this preach baker Job said though he slay me yet will I trust him watch this what Job is saying is kind of parallel to what we see in the text because the text says if the runners have worn you out how can you then amen enjoy bigger blessings watch this what Job was saying though he slay me though I went through some trouble though I've had trials and tribulations Job said I will not give up Job said yes it's been hard in my life but I will not give up I'm gonna trust in the Lord I need for you to understand that this season of your life you've got to trust in the Lord and you've got to put in the work somebody type in I'm putting in the work I need for you to just get to a place amen that you put down that whiteboard in your house you put down those white papers in your house you written down the vision you wrote down the things you want to get accomplished and every morning I need you my brothers and my sisters to put your big boy and your big woman pants on and say you know what I'm grown I'm finna make this thing happen. I'm going to put in the work. I don't need no handouts. I have enough knowledge, enough wisdom of God to put in some hard work. Somebody say, I'm rejecting the spirit of lazy. I'm rejecting the spirit of lazy out of my children. We see children are just sitting around doing nothing. Go on now. Slap them children on the back of their head. Say, get up. You guys not be lazy in my house because lazy cannot live in our lives if we're going to be prosperous. Watch this. Too often we just want to just rub the bottle and think God's going to come out like a genie and just give us three wishes. No, baby boy, you got to get up and do some work. You got to get up and at least watch this fill out the application because if God is going to bless you in this season, what are you willing to put in in order to get out? All right, so you don't think you got to put nothing in to get out? Uh, how many of y'all got debit cards? How many of y'all got debit cards? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I see y'all. Okay, so here it is. If you go to the ATM machine and you try to get out $300 out your account, but you ain't put $300 in, uh, it's going to send you a little message back and say, unable to withdraw these funds. You know what the problem with us is? We want to withdraw from God all day long, but we don't want to put nothing in. We, we want to withdraw. We want everybody to do. But what are you willing to put in? He says if you have raced with runners and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? Runners, runners. Man, can I tell you something? In this season of my life, I want to just encourage you keep running. Keep putting in the work because I understand that right now, yeah, I'm, I'm dealing with runners. I'm dealing with footmen. I'm dealing with small situations. I'm dealing with small problems. But I believe if I keep on running, I believe if I just keep on running, Bishop of Videography, I believe at some point God going to say, okay, even when I brought situations in your life, you kept on running. Even when it got rough, you kept on running. Even when the pandemic came, you kept on preaching. Even when troubles came in your life, you kept on loving folk. I I need somebody to type down in the comment field. I'm determined to keep on running. Oh, brothers and sisters, because we understand, he says, if you can keep on running, if you can get through this, somebody say, if I can just get through this. Woo. God says, if you can just get through this, 
you have no clue what's on the other side of this. Somebody say on the other side of through. I believe on the other side of through, God has a major blessing for you. Don't give up right now. I need you to keep running. That is a major blessing on the other side of through. I know it looks dim right now, but that is a major blessing on the other side of through. I need you to keep pushing. I need you to keep praying. I need you to keep trusting in the Lord because that is a blessing on the other side of through. Oh, brothers and sisters, even right here in Concord, Georgia, amen, right across the street from our lovely church, there's a, a, a horse stable there, and there's horses out there, and them horses get to running and moving around. And I, one day I, I said, why in the world do horses stand up so much? Ain't it something that a horse can stand up and rest while it's standing? Woo! I, I want to talk to somebody, and you got to understand that God is going to bring you and position you that you can stand up, you can still get rest, you can still make it happen. I need some people to say, I'm standing up in this season. I cannot lay down, because if you've ever seen a horse run, a horse can run at full speed for miles. A horse can keep going, and I don't know about y'all, but listen, hey man, I'm getting to a point now, I can, I can barely, hey man, walk a mile in a whole week, and you're talking about a horse, what God is saying, this is going to bless you. Amen. What God is saying is, I have high expectations for you. You're probably saying, Pastor, ain't no way I can run like a horse. And I was telling somebody earlier today, we got to be careful with telling people, just do your best. No, I'm in a season of my life, I ain't trying to do my best. I'm trying to do what God has required of me. But watch this. In order for me to run like horses, in order for me to stand like horses, in order for me to be able to contend with horses, I'll be out of my mind to think I can do it in my natural power. Here's where my faith come in. I only believe I can do these miraculous things. I can work like this if I'm in the power of Jesus Christ. See, my natural man can't do this, but the power that worketh in me, Lord help me, it allows me to do things that I can't do in the natural. Somebody type down, I need the supernatural to happen. I can't understand it. Hey man, watch this. Hey man, how God can fool around and take a brown cow that produces white milk after green, eating some green grass. I can't figure that stuff out, but I believe if I just trust in the Lord, just how he can make miraculous things like that happen, God is going to take my life and produce some stuff simply because, watch this, uh, his expectations of me are very high. Okay, you ought to be happy to know right now that God sees much value in you. He has high expectations for you that he don't just want you running with footmen, but God wants to elevate you to a place where you can compete with horses. I wish somebody would just look me in the eye right now and say, I want to get to a level where God can say, watch this. Uh, here is a requirement that I have for you. I don't want you down here. I want to require you to be on this level. Are you putting in the work that God can trust you with the next level? Oh, brothers and sisters, my time is out. But are you willing to put in the work? If you have race with runners, they have worn you out. How can you compete with horses? If you stumble in a peaceful land, what will you do in the thickets of the Jordan? Are you ready for God to take you to the next level? Are you still complaining about every little thing, yet you want more money? You, you, you don't even take care of the car you got, but you're up here talking about you want a new car? God says, I, I, I'm, my requirements of you it's for you to be able to contend and compete with horses. Man, you know how much horsepower a horse has? God, you, you think that much of me to, to be that powerful? God said, yes, but you got to rely on me. I can do the supernatural with what your natural can't do. Listen, my time is up, but I want to just share with you, are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to go through it in this season? Are you just going to keep saying this is my year? Yeah, this is your year, but you got to put in the work. Are you ready? He said, horses. Man, have y'all ever been up next to a horse? Huh? He said, horses. Horses, man, they so big, they muscle. I mean, these, these, uh, whoo, I mean, the first time I ever rode a horse, I was scared. I said, man, this is one phenomenal animal that God created. Like his structure, I mean, his I mean, so much that we like the horse so much, we, we, y'all start taking the horse hair, putting it in your heads. I mean, the horse, I mean, just look at it. I mean, whoo, beautiful. Now look at this. God says, 
what I can do, I can take you to a level to where you can be as, just as strong as a horse. You can glide. You can keep going for miles. Because I believe God has something in front of you. It's going to take horsepower. Somebody talk down horsepower. See, see, in this season of your life, in a, in a man, y'all, y'all, we, we, we know we like a car with horsepower. Women too. We, because we need that punch. God says in this season, I got to get some power. You, who, who knows that you've been too lazy? You, God says, get up, man. You want the dreams to come true, but you, you want to get them to come true at 6 o'clock in the evening. Get up in the morning. He says, I, I wanna, I'm going to work this thing for you. But you can't, you can't die in the season. Listen, you can't, you, can't, you can't die. When I say die, not physical death, but you can't, you can't give up in a season of small stuff. I think that God is going to take you into big stuff. Last thing, I just want to share this with you. Because I believe if you're going, if you're going to fall out and get tired with swinging with midgets, how in the world are you going to fight giants? If the midgets have taken you out. I ain't, I ain't joining no midgets. I don't want nobody saying, hey, that's cold, Pastor. That's cold you talking about midgets. I'm using that as an analogy. If the midgets can take you out, how then are you ready and prepared to fight giants? David knocked out Goliath. David, but what he used was a stone. It wasn't so much of the stone, it was the supernatural power that came with it. But what? David had to at least throw it. Can I just ask about five of y'all today, are you ready to throw your stones? Are you ready to make your moves? If 2021 is going to be your year, you got to put in the work. Listen, this is Pastor Q. I want for this to be a great year for you, but it won't come being lazy. You got to put in the work. God bless you. Peace. We'll see you next week. Hey, did you guys enjoy that service on today? Listen, it's Minister Dewberry, youth minister here at New Mac Cavern. We want to thank you for joining the worship service on today. We pray that the word bless you in a mighty way on today. If you are not a part of a church family, we would love for you to be a part of the NMC church family. Please email us at the email below. Also, if you didn't have a chance to give during the worship experience on today, now's the perfect time for you to give. The ways to give are below. So, we want to thank you again for joining the New Mac Cavery worship experience, and we, wanna, we hope that you have a blessed day. Come on, put your hands together as we get ready to leave today. I hope you enjoyed the message. I hope God blessed you. I want you to put your hands together and dance a little bit with me. Come on. To the left. To the right. Come on. Hey. To the left. To the right. Come on. Take it back. To the left. Come on. Take it back. Come on. To the left. <laughs> Listen. If it had, can I be for the Lord? On my side, tell me where would I be? Oh, where would I? Come on, hey, hey, where would I be? Where would you be? Where would I be if it had had I been for the Lord on my side? Tell me.